Welcome back, class. In our last lesson, we learned how to use scalar multiplication to help us um, change equations so that we could solve systems of equations using elimination. Today, we're going to look at some instances where using scalar multiplication to multiply one equation isn't going to help us enough. We're going to have to use scalar multiplication twice. We're going to have to multiply both equations by a number to help us use elimination. So here's the steps that we use when we have to use double scalar multiplication. The first step is we need to decide which variable to eliminate. And you can choose either one. <clears throat> um, I suggest to look for which one is the easiest and I'll try and help you show I'll try and help show you which one is the easiest here in just a minute. Step number two is determine a common multiple. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that here when we get to the examples. Step number three is to multiply each equation by the scalar multiplier necessary to reach that common multiple that you came up with. Um, and you also have to remember that one of them needs to be positive and one of them needs to be negative so that they can cancel each other out. Step number four is to add the equations and solve for the remaining variable. And then step number five is to substitute your answer back into one of the original equations so that you can solve for the other variable. I know that kind of seems like a lot of talking there, but it's really not as complicated as it seems. Let me show you a couple of examples so that you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> All right, in this first example, I have a systems of equations. And when I look at it, I've got my x's on top of my x's, my y's on top of my y's, and my numbers on top of my numbers. Just looking at the equations here, if I add these together, neither my x's nor my y's are going to eliminate themselves. Okay, So I know that I'm going to have to do some sort of scalar multiplication. But when I look at it, there's nothing that I can multiply these x's, like this x by, for instance, to get a positive 2. There's nothing I can multiply negative 2 by to get negative 3. So I'm not going to be able to eliminate my x's. When I look at my y's, I can't multiply this 4 times anything to get a positive 6. And I can't multiply this negative 6 times anything to get a negative 4. So a single scalar multiplication isn't going to work. What I'm going to have to do is do a double scalar multiplication. All right, and so to do this, again, <clears throat> the first step is to decide which variable I want to eliminate. And it doesn't really matter, although I like to pick one of them with a positive coefficient and a negative coefficient. So these x's have that. The y's also have it, by the way. They have a positive 4 and a negative 6. But let's focus on these x's for now. I have a positive 3 and a negative 2. Okay, so I already have the positive and the negative part down. I just need these to be the same number now. Okay? So we're going to eliminate our x's. Let's decide on x as the variable we want to eliminate. The next step is to decide on a common multiple between these. Okay, and if you don't know how to find a common multiple, the easiest thing to do is just multiply these two numbers times each other. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 is a common multiple of those two numbers, 3 and 2. Okay, so let's use 6 as our common multiple. Next, then, is we need to multiply both equations by a number that will get us to that common multiple. Okay, so this top equation, obviously we're going to have to multiply it times 2 because 3 times 2 would give us 6, right? Okay, so let's multiply this top equation by 2. And remember, when you're doing this scalar multiplication, if you multiply one thing by 2, you need to multiply everything by 2. So I'm just going to rewrite that equation over here. 3x times 2 is 6x. 4y um, times 2 is 8y. And negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Okay, so that's one equation down. Now let's look at this second equation. What do I need to multiply negative 2 by so that I end up with negative 6? Okay, and obviously, again, this time I need to multiply by 3. Okay, and if I multiply one thing by 3, I've got to multiply everything by 3. So negative 2x times 3 is negative 6x. Negative 6y times 3 is negative 18y. <clears throat> and negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. 
All right. Again, in that step number three, you want to make sure that those variables that you want to eliminate, one coefficient is positive and one coefficient is negative. That's super important. If they're both positive, then they're going to add up to 12 instead of 0, right? If they're both negative, they're going to add up to negative 12 instead of 0. So I want one positive, one negative, so they cancel each other out. Now I can add these two equations and then solve for the remaining variable. Okay, so 6x minus 6x, those cancel out. 8y minus 18y is negative 10y. And negative 2 minus 18 is negative 20. So I can divide both sides by negative 10. And I end up with y equals 2. So then for that last step, I take my answer and I substitute it into one of these equations to solve for my other variable. Again, you can choose whichever equation you'd like. Choose one that's going to be easy for you. I'm going to choose the top one because it doesn't have any of the negatives. Okay, so I just substitute this 2 in for y. Okay, kind of separate my board there a little bit. I get 3x plus 2, excuse me, 3x plus 4 times 2 equals negative 1. Then I just do some algebra. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract 8 from both sides and I get 3x equals negative 9. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals negative 3. Okay, so the solution to this system then is the point negative 3, comma 2. Okay, my x is negative 3, my y is 2. That's when these two equations are equal to each other. Okay, hopefully that example helped clear a little bit up. Let's try another one and see if we can get better at it. All right, second example here. My x's are on top of my x's, my y's are on top of my y's, my numbers are on top of my numbers. When I look at it, just looking at it, I can see that none of my x's or my y's are going to cancel out as it is right now. Okay, I can also see that there's nothing I can multiply one of these equations by to get the other equation to cancel it out. Okay, so I know that I'm going to need to use double scalar. So first step is to choose which variable do you want to eliminate. <clears throat> okay, and again, it doesn't matter. You could pick X or Y. Not a big deal which one you pick. One thing that you want to look for is, is one of them a negative and the other one a positive? And in this case, both the x's have a negative and a positive, and the y's also have a negative and a positive. Okay? Since we eliminated the x's last time, let's eliminate the y's this time. Okay? So I need to find a common multiple between this negative 3 and this 4. Okay? So what number can I multiply? What number do they have in common when you multiply them? Okay? And the easiest way to do it is just multiply them times each other. And 3 times 4 is 12. So let's use 12 as our common multiple. Okay? So I need to multiply this top equation by something so that I get negative 12y. Okay? And so I must have to multiply it by 4 because negative 3 times 4 would give me negative 12y. So let's multiply this top equation by 4. Alright, so when I multiply everything by 4, that's what I get. This second equation, I need to get this 4y to be a 12y. So what do I need to multiply this by to get 12? And the answer is 3, of course. So I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by 3, making sure that I multiply everything by 3, not just certain parts. So 
5x times 3 is 15x. 4y times 3 is 12y. And negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Now I've got it where I've got a negative 12y and a positive 12y, and I know that they're going to cancel each other out. They're going to eliminate themselves. So I add these two equations together. And I get 7x equals 14. To solve for x, I just divide by 7. And I end up with x equals 2. Now that I know x, I can plug it into one of these equations and solve for y. Choose whichever equation looks easiest to you. I'm going to choose the bottom one. So I just rewrite that bottom equation, except instead of x, I put a 2. Then I use some algebra to solve for y. Subtract 10 from both sides. I get 4y equals negative 12. Divide by 4. And I get y equals negative 3. My x is 2. My y is negative 3. So when I write my solution as an ordered pair, I get 2 comma negative 3. All right, so there's two examples. Let's try one more example. This might be a good time in your notes to pause the video, look at the next example, try and solve it on your own, and see how you do. Then you can go ahead and watch the video and see if you did the same things that I did and see if you got the same answer as I did. If you didn't get the same answer as me, then you might want to go back and watch this video again to see where you're making your mistakes. If you do get the same answer as me, then that's great. You can go on to the three examples at the end of your notes here and see how you do on those three. Okay, so let's try one more example. Example number three. Just looking at it, I know that when I add these together, my x's are not going to eliminate themselves. My y's are not going to eliminate themselves. I look for a number that I can multiply one equation by, and there's nothing there. I'm going to have to use double scalar. Okay, I'm going to have to multiply both equations by a number. First step is pick a variable that you want to eliminate. Okay, when I look at my x's, I'm looking for one positive and one negative, but I don't have it. This time, both of them are negative. When I look at my y's, I'm looking for one negative and one positive, but I don't have it. They're both positive. So that means I need to be very careful when I'm doing my scalar multiplication because I want to make sure that I end up with one negative and one positive. Okay, so be careful when you think about what you're going to multiply by. In this example, let's just say that we want to eliminate our x's. Okay, you could choose y's if you wanted to, but let's say we want to get rid of our x's. Okay, so I'm looking for a common multiple between 3 and 5. If you don't know how to do that, just multiply them together. 3 times 5 is 15. So let's say that we want this one to be positive 15 and this one to be negative 15. Remember, we want one positive, one negative. So what would we have to multiply negative 3 by to get a positive 15? we'd have to multiply by a negative 5. Okay, so we need to multiply everything by negative 5. Negative 3 times negative 5 is 15x. 3y times negative 5 is negative 15 15y, 15 sorry, negative 15y. And then finally, 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. Okay, so we did the first equation. Let's do this second equation. Remember that I want my x to be a negative 15. So I need to multiply negative 5 times something to get negative 15. I must have to multiply times 3. Right? Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15x. 4y times 3 is 12y. 
and 10 times 3 is 30. I just want to take a look at my new equations and make sure that it makes sense and that I'm doing the right thing. I've got a positive 15x on top and a negative 15x on bottom. It looks like they're going to eliminate themselves. So let's add these two equations together. I end up with negative 3y equals negative 15. Divide both sides by negative 3. And I get y equals 5. I'm going to take this answer. I'm going to substitute it into one of these equations up here and solve for x. Let's choose the top equation. Okay, so I just rewrote the top equation, except instead of y, I put a 5. I use some algebra now. 3 times 5 is 15. Subtract 15 from both sides. Divide both sides by negative 3. And I end up with x equals 2. So the solution to this system of equations is 2 comma 5. All right, so that's how you do scalar multiplication, double scalar multiplication to solve systems using elimination. Um, if you have any questions or anything, make sure that you jot them down in your notes so we can answer them in class tomorrow. I hope this comes easy to you, and good luck.